Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this two-part video you should be able to describe what's meant by the conservation of energy. You should then be able to describe how energy can be transferred within a system and finally you should be able to describe what happens when energy is dissipated. Over the last few videos we've been looking at different forms of energy. We've seen that kinetic energy is the energy stored in a moving object. Gravitational potential energy is the energy stored due to an object's position above the ground. Elastic potential energy is the energy stored in a stretched spring. And finally, thermal energy is the energy stored due to an object's temperature. Now I should point out that these are not the only forms of energy, but these are what we're focusing on for the moment. In this video, we're looking at how energy can be transferred from one form to another. But before we look at that, we've got to explore a key idea in physics. This is called the law of conservation of energy, and I'm showing you this here. It's really important that you learn this. Energy can be transferred usefully, stored, or dissipated, but it cannot be created or destroyed. Now this sounds a bit tricky, so the best way to look at this is with examples. I'm showing you here a pendulum. I've got a mass attached to a string, and the string is attached to a fixed point. Now scientists call a setup like this a system. There's nothing tricky about the idea of a system. A system is just an object or a group of objects. So in this case, the objects are the mass, the string, and the fixed point at the top. There are also air particles, and all of that is the system. Now, I want you to imagine that no energy can pass into this system or out of this system. Scientists call that a closed system, because no energy can enter or leave. So if we take a snapshot of the pendulum, we can see the energy transfers more easily. At the top, the mass has the maximum store of gravitational potential energy. As the pendulum swings, this is transferred to the kinetic energy store. The mass has the maximum kinetic energy store at the bottom of the swing, since that's where it's moving at the fastest speed. Now, as the mass swings back up, the kinetic energy store transfers to the gravitational potential energy store again. It's really worth learning these energy transfers, as this often comes up in the exam. Now there is a problem with this model of energy transfer in the pendulum, and that is that we've not considered friction. As the pendulum swings, there's friction in the fixed point. There's also friction as the pendulum passes through the air particles. Now friction causes energy to be transferred to thermal energy stores. The fixed point and the air around the pendulum gradually get warmer. These stores of thermal energy are less useful. Scientists say that the energy has been dissipated, in other words, it's been wasted. This will cause the pendulum to gradually swing with less energy and it will eventually stop. Now we can reduce unwanted energy transfers by reducing friction. And in the case of the pendulum, we could do that by using a lubricant such as oil on the fixed point, or by removing the air particles from around the pendulum. Remember, you'll find plenty more questions on energy transfers in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to describe what's meant by the conservation of energy. You should then be able to describe how energy can be transferred within a system. And finally, you should be able to describe what happens when energy is dissipated.